Welcome to Top Gear Mag India. First of all, guys, I'm, I've got mild cold. Don't worry, it's not COVID. What got me rolling in these two cars? You know that in Latin, Audi means listen, and in Latin again, Volvo means I roll. So today we are rolling with these two luxury SUVs that cost shy of one crore, and they both are seven seaters. Of course, then there is Mercedes GLS, which costs about 20 lakh rupees extra. Then you have the BMW X7 that again would cost you 40 to 50 lakh extra than these two. So which apparently basically means that these two are the cars which actually are the cars which will cost you around a crore and they both are seven seats. Now let's listen to the Audi Q7 first. Let's start with the grille. This is the same grille which is the octagonal grille which comes in the Audi Q8 and actually it cuts across right across all the models. This the difference is that instead of horizontal these are now vertical strips and these are brushed metals. This is chrome. So we have some chrome also. Now this brush metal looks very rich, very premium. Now when you step back and you see this, this is what disappoints me because this is not something which really goes well with the luxury image of the Q7. This is very, very, uh, what do you call it? Doesn't really have that premiumness to it, but this is a air ducts. This is the matrix head LED headlights. Good thing is that it's a very small little detail, but this has a headlight washer, which always looks cool right across all the ranges. Now this tire is kind of disappointing. There's a five spoke wheel, which looks kind of outdated, unlike the XC90, which looks more premium. And this again is a 19 inch rim. The XC90 has 20 inch rim, though it has more of rubber, which is good for the Indian roads. It also comes with a side step, which is not there in the XC90, though you don't need it, but it's always good to have a side step. Now, there are two character lines, which is flowing right through the range and kind of looks very cool. It connects you with the LED lights and the rear and it looks very nice, yes. The rear design isn't that appealing or striking, but it's also a no-nonsense kind of a design. They have added the brushed metal, which runs right across the tail lamps. There are the chrome strips, again, the logo is in chrome once again. The badging of 55 TFSI Quattro in, again in chrome. Then there's this uh, brushed metal strips right here. And it looks quite okay. Now, this is, this is the cockpit. It also is a virtual cockpit right in front of you. And I have to say that the dash layout of the Q7 is actually much modern and much sleeker than the boring XC90, yes. This is where they score really, because they have three screens. But if you ask me, do you require this screen, which is giving you basically signs of air conditioning? Not really, but they've given you. It doesn't have a heads up display which is something it's lacking here. It is a soft plastic. It could have been some other material because this is where things go north and the XC90 has complete leather feel about it. It has a Audi glove box where you can keep your charging phone right here. But the problem is that when you keep your phone, you have to put it back. So in case you want to see a signal, you want to see the phones, you have to again take it out and do it. That's cumbersome. It comes with charging ports, which is C-type, which is again, what is the need of the R. The glove box is again quite uh, quite spacious. You have two cup coffee holders. Pretty much neat compartment. Let's hop onto the rear seat then. Now the rear seat, as I said, Audi comes with a lot of screens. There's a screen right here, there's a screen right there, there's a screen right here which tells you AC temperature. This screen, I don't know if it is of much use because you'll be always watching your mobile or iPad, but there's a screen just in case you want to watch a movie, answer your mails, whatever. The seat position, it's quite uh, spacious. It's quite a spacious cabin to be in, but the screen is taking too much of space. I think I'm, I'll better off take out the screen and have more of room here right now. The sunroof, panoramic sunroof is quite airy, quite roomy. It opens more than the XC90, though it's not too much, but it's still better than the XC90 in terms of sunroof and the amount of width you get to open the window pane. Now it comes with a sun blinds, which is manual right here. They have a hook here. Of course, you'll need that. I can see two charging ports right now and there's a 12 volt charging port right here there's a transmission tunnel which goes right from the middle which makes the third passenger seat a little complicated but you'll be buying the q7 for the third row so let's see how comfortable the third row is honestly if it's for kids it's a good place but if it's anybody else it's an adult then he'll be cursing you trust me he'll be cursing you because you can see I'm kind of uncomfortable right now. I'm also sweating profusely because there's no AC duct here. Yeah, there's no AC duct. So you can see right now, if I pull this back, 
that I'm kind of very uncomfortable. Now, Volvo believes in the adage that if it ain't broken, don't fix it. Yes. So the design language is very simple, very refined, yet very premium. It looks butch in some way, but it doesn't really very complicated, right? So right from the grill here, which is which will remind you of the same XC90, but there are these changes minutely here and there. Of course, it gets a fog light, which is here. There are these chrome strips here. Now, this complete light is an LED light. Now, this is where entire uh, safety features of all the Adidas features of the Volvo cars it gets gets kept here. Of course, this also the defrost thing, which can clear, and the logo is always visible. Yes, there's a lot of history behind the logo, but more of that later. Now, moving on. It comes with a 20-inch rim. It's diamond cut. This alloy looks much better than the Q7. Definitely looks looks much better than the Q7. Of course, that also has 19-inch rim. So here, it really does score a point over that. It doesn't have a side step that you have in the Q7. That's something which is missing, but you don't really require that. And this chrome strip and this uh, muscular lines here gives it a very upright stance. You know. So uh, of course, there's this wheel arch over the wheel again. Makes it this tiny, mini, mini details gives it from the side a very, very uh, distinct profile. Now, this is the best part. The design language of the rear of the Volvo XC90 is the best in the segment. For me, of course, I don't know about you, but this is so beautiful. You know, even from five miles away, literally, you can see the lights when it breaks, and you can know that it's a Volvo going ahead. So it's very distinct, you know. And there's this badging which is very clear, Volvo, which is very, very distant on your face. We have a new segment, guys, called the key comparison. Now here the keys are. Now somehow the Volvo key looks more premium, squarish. Doesn't make a big bulge in your pocket while you are keeping it. Audi, for some reason, is more on the fatter side. Looks like you know is eating too much of calories. It's also got uh, the Volvo also gets two keys. One is this very bright-looking orange. Of course, this has a function of limiter. You can open all the windows down with both the keys. In fact, you can lock unlock the cars. You can open the boot. Pretty much the same thing. Now this is a very familiar space because I've spent a lot of time with the 90, and I know nothing much has changed. It still looks same as I said. Volvo doesn't believe in too much changes. It's a leather here. It's a very nice feel here. The Q7 has a soft plastic on the top, so it looks more premium. But yes, the Q7 has more of screens. There's a screen, there's three screens here. In fact, even the front has a virtual cockpit. So that way. Uh, this looks no nonsense. It looks luxury from all its angles. There's this wireless charging, which is right in your front, which is very practical. In fact, you can see your phone while it's being charged. There's these two cup holders. Nothing much to talk. There's a speaker system, which is again very high quality. Now let's hop onto the rear seat and see the leg room. Now the second row seats. Something about the XC90 is that it's very premium. The leather feels more premium than the Q7. And I like this combination of the color also, it's dark brown, dark tan, Napa leather all over the place. Now, there are two uh, charging ports here, which is C-type. In the front, you get a proper USB, and the rear, you get two C-type charging ports. Then, you have a magazine track rate, maybe you can keep your iPad here. There is no screen which comes in the Q7. You actually don't need the screen. It looks overall very uh, roomy cabin. The sunroof doesn't go all the way back, but it's decent enough. Then you have the coat hangers hooks here couple of hooks here the xc90 you'll be buying for your seventh passenger for the last two rows how good is that this is how the third row people will be sitting it's not the most comfortable place in the car of course but the two people can be comfortable you can see the leg room right now purposely i've kept this like this so that you can take a sense of how your leg would be placed you have a cuff folder here you have something to keep here then there's an AC vent right here, which is a very good thing. Again, you have a coat hanger here, which is nice. You can stuck something right here. And there's a speaker right on your head. So you'll be always listening to music. Remember the deal breaker I told you at the beginning? That's the front row massage seat which the Volvo XC90, even X60 comes with. When I drove it to Ladakh from Delhi, that single feature really helped me keep awake, keep the steering because it keeps you rejuvenated. Besides, 
who doesn't like massage? Now, Audi should have thrown that in the Q7 because it's a luxury SUV. And that single feature could have changed a lot in its favor. XC90 is a 2-liter mild hybrid petrol engine with 300 horsepower, which is actually 40 horsepower less than the Audi Q7 and 420 mm of torque. So is it less powerful? Well, if you're looking for more power, then yes. But if not, then it drives beautifully with loads of confidence and actually enough power. There are not many cars which are comparable to what that of Volvo's safety mechanism. All his driver assist, especially the steering assist, which literally shouts at you with its, with its vibrations and tells you to come back on track if it feels that you've gone out of the track. And when it's lane assist, it will always try to put you back on the track. Though in India, sometimes you feel annoyed, but most of the time it really works, you know, and it senses a collision ahead, the brakes will automatically get jammed and you will get that, you know, that jhatka, but it's good to have that jhatka than to have an accident. It has a certain kind of heft to the way it moves. It has a definite characteristic to the way it drives. The power delivery is very linear. But in case you want to overtake, just gun the metal down and it will give you enough surge to move along. It has different driving modes, eco, comfort and dynamic, which fiddle with the gear ratios and changes its character a little. The steering feels very chunky to hold, very premium, but with a lot of confidence. Though it's a big car, but it's very easy to maneuver the car. It's a humongous car, but doesn't feel like that. Something which I like about the Q7 also the same thing, because you know, both of them are cars which are huge in proportions. But when you start, start to drive, it doesn't feel that huge. You can really cut corners, you can really drive along. Uh, something which has got to do with a lot with the steering of both these cars. Both the steerings are phenomenally well crafted. The sitting position is very good. But what I don't like too much is the central console because you know when you are uh, driving along, the controls are little easy, but sometimes it's also a little complicated. So it's, it's actually a double-edged sword. Volvo needs to do some sort of tinkering to make it more user-friendly. But it's a luxury SUV, so let's see how the rear seat looks like. So the rear room is a lounge. It's actually a lounge. It feels very premium. The Napa leather speaks of luxury. The speakers, there you are know, these fine details like speakers, steel fresh speakers here. Bose and Vincent logo coming out. Again, there are some lines which are manual, but there are some lines right there. The leg room, there's acres of leg room. This 2022 Audi Q7 is a 3 litre V6 engine which turns out 340 horsepower and 500 Newton of torque. Now, these numbers are definitely way better than that of Volvo's XC90s. But my question is, is it important? Are you looking for a performance SUV? Does it really solve the purpose that you are targeting? You're actually looking for a family hauler, which is a seven-seater, then definitely these numbers will really not make that a big difference. Though it never hurts to have more power under your tab. And for that, the Q7 definitely has a few marks over the XC90. When it comes to driving, the lane keep assist and the steering assist, all of that features are of course preloaded in the Q7 but it's not as seamless as that of Volvo. Volvo has had over the years mastered that art, you know, in terms of safety, in terms of driving mechanics, driving safety features. It will constantly nudge you back in the lane and sometimes it gets annoying uh, to the point of, you know, uh, that you're not liking it. And it's not going to be as smooth as that of Volvo, but it's definitely a great feature to have. This comes with uh, more driving modes than that of the Volvo. It also has an off-road mode, it has a all-road mode, it has an efficiency mode, comfort mode, but somehow, you can't really make too much of a difference between the efficiency and the comfort unless you put the throttle on the off-road mode. Then things change and the suspension is more opened up so that it can, you know, go over that rough patches which comes along your way. So the Q7 actually, the proposition is also to give you that kind of uh, little bit of performance because the numbers also on that attend and the feature also which it comes with it also has some more th thing to throw which probably Volvo would not be giving you. The Q7 is a 5052 mm in length, which basically means it's a long car. Now, when you drive, it doesn't feel like that because you can really cut across corners very, very easily and you don't feel that, you know, the car is stopping you. Even the steering is very easy to come on and very responsive. It's not a very chunky steering to hold. It's a very smooth steering, just like all the Audis and very responsive to your, you know, to all your needs, basically. And even with, and really helps when you're going to overtake and you're going to drive for long because it's a luxury SUV and you're going to drive for a long time. So all that thing really helps because 
though it's a big car it doesn't feel big it feels very compact so in that sense it's a great thing to do so this is the second row seat where you, you could be spending a lot of your time now this is not the plushest of the cabin but it feels good because there's a very big panoramic sunroof there's a screen in front of you though there is some blind which again is manual it could have been electronically adjusted the ride quality with all its suspension setup in the second row passenger also is very good now the more i look at it the more confused i am because both this german and the swedish counterpart are totally different they are like a set of two different separate individuals if you're someone who likes more power who likes a brand name which is more seen on the road which is more easily understood then the q7 will make a lot of sense but if you're someone who likes to be more understated who likes who for whom safety is of paramount importance then the x90 definitely sits right up there of course x90 has a uh, front row massage seats has a mild hybrid system has a few things which i am more skewed towards that but if i look at the power figures of the audi q7 then again i'm confused so i'm actually going to leave you very confused drop on the comments what will your pick be and help me sort this confusion and don't forget to like share and subscribe under the next one take care while i go back looking at both these beauties once again